Hi, welcome to Amma. My name is Kjartan, and we're going to live stream here from Reykjavik, Iceland. Uh, come inside. Uh, behind the camera, we have Thorlogger, and behind her is Hanna. So you won't maybe see them a little bit tonight. Tonight? No, it's not tonight. It's actually 4 30 here in Iceland. Uh, the weather is pretty fine for this time of the year. It's kind of like a nice day outside. So it's kind of empty here at the moment. So we're going to do a look around, see a little bit what we're doing. There might be something in the back here that we're working on. It's a good time to be working on. But it's a little bit slow. So this room that we're in now, this is the production room. Uh, this is where we make all the chocolate. Um, so we're going to walk a little through here and we're going to go to the roaster. So anytime we give a day, we have like two, three people working in this room uh, making the chocolate. And of course, it all starts here with the roaster. And this dad by boy comes from Italy, from Selmi. Like most of our equipment does, uh, we use mostly the Selmi equipment, a little bit of still old, the old school Coca towns. But this roaster is phenomenal. We have like a set recipe system for all our roasting methods. So you can depend whether we're using the Nigraco cooked bean, Peruvian, Madagascar, we all have a preset feature. From there, we go to the winnower. So we have the fresh cocoa bean that has been roasted. These are the ones from Nicaragua. They come from Ingeman cacao. Amazing, the Opayo variety. Uh, it's a super nice cocoa bean. It actually won us the best milk chocolate award uh, two years ago. And I absolutely love this color of this stuff. I'm really thick and nice at this moment. So the winnower crushes the bean and separates the husk. So the way it works, you can peek inside. We actually had Selby modify this machine for us. So the cocoa bean will come through here, the nips, sorry. So they, after they've been cracked and up down this, this is where the suck, the husk gets sucked up and into the waste basket here. Uh, we use a little bit of the husk. We usually donate it to breweries. We have like three of them here in Iceland at least that have made beer from it. This is amazing. And also, this uh, company does like face and body scrub. They use it to mix into their soaps. So, sorry, I missed out, but the nips will then come right out here. And um, we yeah, just have a little bit here that needs to, to go get around another time. So, the nips then get put into the grinder. So, technically, this is almost like a huge peanut butter grinder. But it mix turns the nips into a, like a really rough paste, sort of very loud when it's running. And from there on, we take it to the Coca Towns, which are essentially the melanches right here. Uh, we start turning it into a mass or liqueur. So we got going some uh, milk. Sorry, this is the milk. This is uh, the Madagascar mass. So we run it for 48 hours before taking it to the bowl refiners. And we still have four of these. This is like what we had ritually. So we started on them about seven years this year. Uh, an old petrol station that's like 20 minutes away from here. And we had one of these bad boys in the beginning, and then we had six of them. So after we upgraded to the ball refiners that you can see right now, we still use these to kind of make the liqueur. So from here on, we add them to the ball refiners. These guys are amazing. I love these machines because essentially what they do, they're like a huge kind of was like blender machine. You see these little steel balls in there covered in chocolate? I wouldn't bite on one of those if you don't want to go to the dentist at the moment. Uh, it will spin around really fast and polarize absolutely everything. So they're called microns because they basically turn everything into the micron, like below 20 microns or so. Uh, for white chocolate, we, we essentially only use these machines and of course we add the, for the milk chocolate as well. Over here we have another micron over here. Um, this is here is our cocoa butter melter. It usually has like 100 kilos of cocoa butter in it. So, uh, and over there we have the panning machines. We got two of these, also from South Asia. I absolutely love these ones. We use this to make the crunch balls. So, essentially, like their chocolate malt balls, we have them in two flavors. We have a licorice flavor and a milk chocolate flavor. So, this is the production. So, we're going to head inside now for the rest of the production. And over here we have what we call packaging and tempering. And this is our cooling tunnel line. Uh, it has an automatic depositor, so it will essentially put all the molds through. Have the chocolate. You can see that little stream there that will fill up the bars. And it will run all, all the way up down here and inside the cooling tunnel. And it takes around 20-30 minutes. 
for the bars to come out crystallized. This year's little thing is my favorite. So we do a lot of solution bars. So the guys in Salvi actually made this for us, customized. So the way it works, put it over here. And when the mold runs under, you can see it pick up, pick them up. This is where we sprinkle on the salt, the nuts, and any other inclusion. And it hits it perfectly and moves towards through the tunnel. So when they come back, the mold will essentially come back here. They'll drop them here, and this is where we have it. We got this little flow packing machine uh, last year, but we weren't super happy with the material that we're using for it. So it's kind of like a cool design though. But it wasn't really the one we wanted, so we still haven't started using this one. So hopefully later this year we'll get the right material for it and we can start operating it. But essentially everything is hand packed in here. We usually have around staff of six to eight people, so we have maybe a capacity of making 4,000 bars here. So over here is actually my favorite spot in the whole production. This is my Tex kitchen. And this is where most of the magic happens. Well, anytime we do a new recipe test, this is where we start. We have four of these uh, small white grinders. Uh, we'll play with all kinds of ideas here. At the moment, we're doing something called skier chocolate. Skier is essentially like an Icelandic version of the Greek yogurt, but it has a little bit more tang, a little bit more drier. And what we did, actually, we had... Uh, I know this doesn't look well, but... This is actually the skier that's been freeze-dried. So, technically, it's kind of like a yogurt. Uh, really sour smell. I think that would be fun for you guys to do something different that we haven't done before. Uh, to my uh, white chocolate using only this here. Just gonna see how it is. I think it's still a little grainy, but I think it's gonna work. Oh, yeah. That's actually really nice. Uh, I was thinking maybe we can temper it. And in traditional here in Iceland, you would eat this like skier for breakfast or lunch or even like a second little dessert. And traditionally, we use like blueberries on top. So I also got some freeze-dried blueberries. So fresh, not fresh anymore, but they were fresh. Uh, Icelandic blueberries that were dehydrated, and kind of mushy. And we're just gonna let's see what it looks like. We're gonna temper it right here. And I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. I never tried this before, so we're gonna just to see if it's gonna work. So tempering for those of you who don't know, it's like we're gonna be. Flatting out the crystals, the, the crystals in fat and cocoa butter. So essentially, the chocolate has to go through the tempering stage in order to have that kind of nice shine and snappiness. To it. Uh, I'm interested to see this one because uh, the skier itself doesn't have any fat, so I need to rethink how I'm gonna do it. So, I mean, I'm kind of fascinated with white chocolate. Because it has that kind of, kind of like a canvas that I can play with different flavors. Uh, I don't know, I think we do around five different types of white chocolate that all have like a different type of flavor in them. Either coffee and licorice. Uh, we have some baked milk actually, which is kind of cool. Uh, we bake some baked milk powder overnight. So essentially, what I'm going to do now is just kind of like move it around a little bit, get it going, agitate it. And on the table here, it's just gonna kind of like cool down a little bit to see those crystals start forming. So my background, before starting chocolate, uh, I used to work as a chef. And my fascination with chocolate just started, you know, because I usually would put in the desserts and because no, not a lot of chefs like making dessert, but I loved it. And for me, chocolate is like the pinnacle of any dessert menu, so to speak. So before this, I didn't even know what to temper, so I'm still working on my tempering skills, but I kind of look cool, right? So, this is just going down, and so in front of us right there is some of the test batches we've done. Uh, so basically every employee of Omelette is required to make their own test batch at some point. Uh, there's no bad idea, so we actually test absolutely everything. It's coming down, I think I want to cool it a little bit more. So if you can, like the pan over there, we have some rye bread chocolate made with caraway seeds and rye bread. Uh, next to that's a super white vegan coconut. And uh, the one that has the wool plug on it, that's actually something we've been working with on common cacao, which is at least 70%. I think we have, uh, we have the fermented pepper. Coffee and barley. Coffee and barley. 
and that is fermented pepper, and then was the Bailey chocolate. Okay, that's right. So I'm not going to see how it's going to work out. We're just going to like super cool it fast and how long have time we've got. But I thought it was just fun to let you guys see how can like the test kitchen process work. This is my first one. See if I can hit it all without spilling inside. Be good. Get everything off. Where are we at? Yeah. So, also here that we used to like to do is to decide, we have some other chocolate we want to let you try yourself. So, since we got you here, I decided to see if anybody was interested in making their own chocolate. I have uh, three chocolates in temper right at the moment. I have some sea salted toffee, some milk of Nicaragua, our 50% milk chocolate, and I've got some Madagascar 66. And also over here, I have like a whole more of a board of inclusion. So, you guys want to write in if you have an idea for chocolate, what kind of mixes you want to see. I'm going to finish tempering this one, and while I'm doing that, I can throw in some limes. We got some ginger, we got some passion fruit, Bailey's, we have uh, single almond, tomato powder, kind of interesting, uh, cherries and rose, and a little bit of yogurt. If you get any ideas, if something else that's not here, let me know. Let me see if we can make a little bit more. This is looking good. It's actually going to season up a little bit more than I expected. It's kind of getting like a frosting fudgy kind of like. I'm trying to get this in the mold as soon as possible. Right. Sorry? This is live, so I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I wasn't really prepared to see what would happen, but it's kind of looking fudgy. Yeah. So, the mold is very, very thick. It's almost like a carrot cake frosting. Oh, that could be an idea. So, just gonna tap it in. I still think I have to push them in. I don't think there's gonna be uh... But, you know, we're doing it live. So, perfect. So, I actually have a glass chiller, so I'm just gonna throw it in there, same time. I will come back to that later. Here, uh, so let's go over here and look at the, well, we have a little Mr. Karras production happening at the moment. Uh, so he stood upon us, uh, this is a little log project we started working on that was uh, four years ago. We came the initial idea that we wanted to do an Easter bunny. Uh, we just finished up production, so I'm actually making some from the staff members that we're going to do. Uh, we used to have like an Easter egg decoration day for the whole family of the staff members, which we sadly had to cancel this year, of course, because of the you know, virus. But I'm going to make one for you. It's super simple. We have our mold here. So it has the two sides because it's gonna has an interlocking magnet for the front and the back. And one thing that I've learned about chocolate is that chocolate doesn't like edges. It loves smooth surfaces so it can flow. So it was quite of a challenge, like wanting to keep the kind of edgy look that Uncle has it inside and uh, making it work because it had to flow. And uh, I'm gonna use the seats on the top. Shaking part starts. You really want to get it as fast into all the edges. So a little tap. Carousel. Go. And we're off. So, do we have any ideas for chocolate? Did somebody come up with something? Tomato and ginger is very popular. Tomato and ginger? Yes. Oh Rose and passion fruit and cherry and ginger. 
cherry ginger, rose and ginger, and uh, to make uh, rose and passion fruit. Rose and passion. Okay, what kind of chocolate? Uh, they don't say. I think okay. they just go for it. Rose and ginger. I'm gonna go for the milk and Nicaragua. I think it's. Uh, I think it will work. God, they're so embedded. So this is our Mito Nicaragua. Our gold. This is absolutely one of my favorite ones that we have. So this is basically how I used to make all our cards by hand. Back when we were at the control station. Okay, tomatoes. Jeez. Let's do a little... This is quite interesting. I'm kind of excited about this one. Okay, let's get really much of it. And ginger. Was it rose or ginger? Oh, it was rose. Ginger. Tomato and ginger. Tomato and ginger, right. Okay. Does this have a reference? Is this like a dish from somewhere? I'm like, I don't know. who would come up with that? Okay. Not the shoot. Ginger is kind of strong, so. Okay, done. What else? Cherry and ginger. Cherry and ginger. Uh, we're doing Madagascar for that. Somebody says here tomato and ginger would be great with the white. Oh, that's actually true. I agree. That's on me. So Madagascar 66. Super fruity. It's uh, a nice like citrus and a very red berry flavor. So I think the cherries absolutely go well with it. In the cherry. Was it tomatoes as well? No. Cherry and ginger. Cherry and ginger. Okay. We will remove the ginger. Did we actually try making a tomato chocolate with the white, like a white tomato chocolate. Uh, we also used some red beet powder for it. And that was actually quite interesting because, interesting enough, if you didn't know that, some yogurt manufacturer actually used to red beets instead of strawberries. It has that same flavor. And the last one? Uh, rose and passion fruit. Rose and passion fruit. So we're gonna do one. Part of the season of the cup. By the way, this is like the skier, kind of like a freeze-dried yogurt. Uh, passion. And a little bit of rose. A little bit of rose. There we go. So these are like sugar petals. They're really, really rosy. Okay, they're going in the blast chiller, and hopefully we have enough time to come back and they'll be ready to try out. I usually wouldn't recommend putting chocolate in the glass chiller, but since we're gonna like tie for time, we're gonna go for it. So let's go a little bit through the factory here. Now this is the same this is the, like where we do the tempering, the packaging. Uh, we also store some of our chocolate blocks here. We have ready-made milk chocolates, the cocoa mask, the liquor. So we also have another storage right here in the back. These guys wait. This is like a 10 kilo block or so. So, it's good to have. So, when we need more chocolate to tamper, we just go directly here. This is our little crunch packaging machine. Um, automatically uh, weighs in their crunch balls and packages them. A little bit more chocolate over here. And then we're going to head on into the tour room. There you go. And this is where we actually have our tours every weekday at 2 o'clock. Uh, we get like groups of 20 max, and we also host like uh, tea pairing nights, beer and chocolate nights. Uh, so a coffee and chocolate, that's what we've done in the past. We get around, people will sit down, we have the cocoa beans on the table, we go through the whole bean to bar process, uh, let people sniff a little bit. We usually have a little sampling kit here where we kind of 
with a mortar and pestle where we kind of put uh, chocolate together for them. And yeah, this is really great. When we actually got this space uh, four years, so we moved into this space four years ago. So we renovated from south. It used to actually be an old fishing factory, like a fish factory back in the 60s. And so there were a couple of walls we needed to knock down. And this is a separate entrance, so we thought it'd be great we can have like a specific tool room here. And yeah, we even have a little micro roaster. I have a question. Yeah. How much cocoa butter do you usually add uh, when refining? So for our dark chocolate, we are around 8% that we use only for the, for the dark ones. Uh, for the milk chocolate, it varies around maybe 20, 25% of cocoa butter there. And of course, white chocolate is used here around 40% cocoa butter. People are asking if they can take the 10 kilo packages home with them. Yeah, you know, I know this is going live. I, I can't say it officially, but you know, it has happened that, you know, some people will grab one of those. But mostly it's been like pastry chefs and like maybe some catering. But we could talk about that. I mean, I think we could wrap it up nicely. Uh, through here, we're going to go through our kind of like office. So this is basically where we sit when we're not making chocolate, coming up with new ideas. Hanna, who's off camera here, sits next to me. So this is our little office. Over the end, we have Veronica, our, our packaging designer and graphic designer. Oscar, my friend and co-founder. And Oliver, his financial guy. And then we have Sandra, Hildur, and Michael. So it's a big little community in here. We also, this is like our break room. So this is where we have our family meals. Fridays is a traditional family Friday. So somebody from the staff will cook a meal, maybe one or two. Uh, it's a tradition that we really love and it really keeps the team very well bonded. Uh, sad to say, like now at this moment, we've been uh, cutting down so most of the office people are working from home. And our production staff uh, is actually working in separate groups at the moment. So we really try to minimize. But, you know, what are you gonna do? So from here, we have our staff area, a little ward of fame, or our wards. Most of them, not all. So through here in the back, we are gonna go through to the back block where we keep most of the stock. And go through the laundry room. We actually expanded into this space um, last summer. So we needed like to move an extra space because uh, we our just last stock room was getting too small and we actually had to rent out another one not far away from. Uh, over here, actually, we have a little wall of you know, past products, stuff that we used to do. Uh, this is kind of interesting. This is one of the first products that we actually came out with seven years ago. It was like these five bars. So this is the original Amlam lineup. Uh, it was the dark milk burnt sugar. Sorry, I still have some cocoa on my finger. 55% uh, made with Dominican rub top of, uh, cocoa beans and the caramelized sugar. Uh, Papua New Guinea, 70%. Uh, one of my favorite bars, but sadly we had to discontinue. And one of my also all time favorite, the Dirty Blonde, uh, which was like a caramelized white chocolate. And uh, it was kind of weird that we had discontinued. The caramelized sugar was kind of like seizing up in production, so we had to discontinue it. But I've actually tried this recently and just wanted to check if it still worked because milk chocolate, you know, tends to go rancid really fast. We didn't just see if it still holds up because it was one of my absolute favorite bars. Oh, it has even the old. The original aluminium, the black one. Oh, wow. Oh, a lot of bubbles. That was when we had a handshake, I presume. But look how the color is kind of like seeded into the paper. And it smells kind of similar. So, wish me luck. Let's see if it holds up. A little crumbling, a little waxy. Not bad. Might have a glass of water soon. So, just not a lot of crap back here, just some stock and uh, packaging ready material. But I'm being told that I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna run back through the shop. We're gonna go through the shop now. See if uh, Kyle has any tea for us. It looks like I'm not feeling able to taste the chocolate we guys made, but we'll post it later on, on our story. Oh yeah, right here, cocoa beans. More or less all, all the stories that we have at the moment. We have enough, so we don't, we will survive the next couple of months at least. Do you want to answer a couple of questions? Oh yeah, let's do it. Uh, who's your designer? Designer, our current designer, her name is Veronica Philippin, who just walked past our desk. Our visual designer was Andre Visage from South Africa. 
Um, and Veranga took over from him and she has designed ever since uh, 2016. Uh, newest flavor? So the newest flavor that we're working on is, well, we kind of have a lot of dark inclusions that we want to do it, but the last one we put out was the licorice raspberry and the seasoned toffee, which has the baked milk in it. People are asking if you're hiring. Yeah. Well, it's actually not at the moment. Shot. I mean, we're always looking for good stuff, but as you probably understand, not at the moment. But you can always submit uh, your resume to work at onlinechocolate.com and we look over everything. So here are we here in the store. This is maybe one of my favorite parts of the room. It's Kyle right over there. I Kyle takes worry. he takes care of all our tourists. He's from Brazil. He also has a little bit of Austrian blood in himself. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Brazilian and speaks Austrian. seven languages. Wow, at least. So Kyle manages the tours and is also a shopkeeper here. And does an awesome job. And he's maybe the foremost tea expert I've met in Iceland. That's so it's quite <laughs> Yeah, we're going to have a Darjeeling. Yeah. Right now. And yes, tea is great with chocolate. Do and I, yes, yes, to pair tea with chocolate. Sometimes we do tea with chocolate pairings. I so forgot about here. it. There was a tea chocolate inside. Yeah. I forgot about it. Yeah, yeah, that is an L grade. We were yeah. running out of time. <laughs> yeah. All right, so just let's have a sip. Be careful not to burn your tea. I don't want, I want. All right. Do you want to tell us what are the best sellers of almond? Uh, chocolate bars. So our best seller is definitely caramel milk. Uh, it's based off the milk of Nicaragua base and with these little crunchy caramel bits inside. And of course in Iceland, this is our absolute favorite, our licorice sea salt bar, made with our organic licorice root. People are, a lot of people are saying hi to Kyle. <laughs> oh, hi everybody. <laughs> right. There you go, oh, you're dodging. Very hot. It's very hot. Cheers. Cheers. Delicious. Lovely, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, maybe just to wrap it up a little bit, I just want to uh, thank a lot on comment, everybody behind this chocolate festival. I've been watching most of the other chocolate makers as well. Uh, it's amazing to get to see everybody in their element. Uh, hopefully, there will be a festival maybe later this year. If not, I will look forward to see you next year. Uh, anybody's interested in any of our product, we do ship in the US everywhere, of course in Iceland.